Sonali Luther and I go to the University of Virginia and today I'll be talking about my project, The Internet of Wasted Things. So to begin, our project seeks to resolve some issues regarding recycling, so I want to give some background on current recycling practices. It's a huge problem these days, especially with China announcing in recent years that they will no longer be accepting the world's recyclable material. And the reason they made this decision is mostly due to the amount of contamination within that recyclable material. As you can imagine, this raised costs for recycling in America. This diagram shows how recycling is much more complex than traditional waste processing as it requires separation, sorting, logistics, distributors, manufacturers, but of course it is the more environmentally friendly option. So the question is, how can we improve our recycling management? First, we have to understand the root problem, which is contamination in recycling. This slide shows a variety of items that are contaminated and therefore cannot be recycled. But as we all know, and are probably guilty of ourselves, those items often end up in recycling bins which leads to recycling conditions like this, where there is a lot of manual labor needed to sort through the items. And here is another image of just how messy that process can be. So that's where our project comes in. Our project, called the Internet of Wasted Things, seeks to curb contamination at the point of disposal by detecting the waste object via camera and machine learning, and then lighting the correct recycling or trash bin with LED lights. The first semester I worked on this project, we completed a closed loop proof of concept of this idea, where we used the YOLO v3 library to detect an object and light a recycling bin. Of course, this type of project comes with many challenges. The first of these is the heterogeneity and also the homogeneity of waste items. For example, these two yellow envelopes may look similar to a machine, but the top envelope is not recyclable while the bottom envelope is. There is also a lack of good quality data for this type of project. The images on this slide and on the previous slide come from an open source data set called TrashNet, but it only depicts the items themselves and not the images of people approaching a trash bin, which would be ideal for our project. Detecting contamination is the most important problem we face, and in some ways it's the crux of this research. But as an example here, we can see that this bottle contains juice and therefore is not recyclable. There is also the issue of detecting the intention of the person near the trash bin. As you can see in this image, I am walking past the camera with a bottle in hand, but it is obvious that it is not my intention to throw the bottle away, but that would have to be detected by the model. These are the steps we've completed so far in our research. First, because there wasn't any good open source data, we took videos of ourselves and annotated the waste objects with the CVAT annotation tool. Here is what that tool looked like. Unfortunately, this was a very tedious process and very time consuming, and we had to search through many annotation tools before finding one that fit our needs. But after those annotations, we had a complete working data set. In total, we used six videos and then extracted the frames from each video where objects were annotated for a total of almost 4,500 images. These images had objects of one of three categories, cup, bottle, or paper. We then randomly selected 80% of the images for training and 20% for testing. Then, after making a steady data set, we wanted to determine how a baseline object detector would perform. We continued to work with the YOLO v3 object detector library. To give some insight, the off-the-shelf model has 106 layers where the first 53 are trained on ImageNet and the second 53 are trained on the COCO dataset, both of which are well-known open-source image datasets. The model is trained for 80 generic classes. On the side here, you can see how YOLO performs on a basic image of a dog and a bicycle. But how did it perform for us? Well, remember our classes of interest are cup, bottle, and paper, and for those classes, YOLO performed very poorly. You can see for cups it had a 0% true positive rate, and in the image you'll see it's detecting persons and chairs, but not the small cup object of our interest. The bottle performed slightly better with a 4% true positive rate, but still pretty terrible for our purposes. Again, you can see the lack of detection on the image in the right. And again, for paper, there is a 0% true positive rate. So before I summarize the YOLO model, I want to give a definition of mean average precision. 
which is a way of measuring the performance of a model through its precision, recall, and IOU. Precision is, of course, the number of correct detections out of the total number of detections, and recall is the number of detections found for all present objects. The IOU is the intersection over union, which determines whether a detection is correct by assessing how much the bounding boxes overlap. So for the baseline model, the MAP was virtually 0%. And this is because it kept detecting persons and chairs and other irrelevant objects, which decreased this MAP score. So now that we know the baseline model wasn't sufficient for our needs, we were left to train a custom model on our data. The first of these models copied the same structure as YOLO, where the first 53 layers were trained on ImageNet, but now the second 53 layers were trained on our custom images and we only train for three classes, cup, bottle, and paper. Here we have a graphic of the YOLO architecture so you can see exactly what those layers look like. The 53rd layer where our custom data would begin training is towards the upper left on the top before any detection on the image would occur. I'll go through the results for the first model pretty fast, but you can already see that it's doing astronomically better than the baseline with an 84% true positive rate for cups, and the cup being correctly detected in this image with high confidence. And again, for the bottle has a 92% true positive rate with an almost perfect confidence in this image. And for paper, which interestingly performed the best, there was a 93% true positive rate. So to recap, the MAP for this model shot up to over 86% which again encompasses the precision, recall, and IOU performance. Now we have a pretty good model, but we want to know if we can do even better. So we try to do just that by implementing what's known as transfer learning. We froze the first 81 layers of the original baseline YOLO model, where the model learned from both the ImageNet and COCO datasets. And then we train the next 25 layers with our custom data. The reason we did this is to allow the model to keep its memory of general objects and their structure, such as their dimensions, curvature, shading, which is hard to learn fully from just our small data set. And as hoped, this model performed even better. For the cup, the confidence on this image rose to 96% with an overall 97% true positive rate. For the bottle, we raised to an almost 99% true positive rate, with still almost perfect confidence on this image. And for paper, the confidence on this particular image went down, but the true positive rate still increased to 96%. And for comparison, this model's MAP was almost 94%, which is really incredible. So now that I've shown enough data, I'll show this fun video to recap what our project would look like in action. And as you can see here, the bin has lit up and the woman is disposing of her object. So creating this project as part of the Internet of Things comes with some challenges. The first of these was choosing an annotation tool. And while CVAT was appropriate for our milestone, it definitely cannot scale in the future with more data because it has to be run and used locally. Then there was the question of which baseline object detector to use. But I think YOLO was a really good choice, and we will continue to build on that in the future. And lastly, as we look to create the hardware on where this model will be run, there are many choices such as an NVIDIA Jetson board or a machine vision camera. And specifically in the future, we'd like to work on field deployment and testing, creating a standalone working component, preserving privacy while recording, and eventually having federated learning across many bin locations. So to con conclude, I want to talk about the bigger picture of our project. Currently in buildings and living spaces, it's very normal to see IoT integrated management systems for electricity, water, energy, etc. But there's no similar waste management system for waste in buildings. With this project, we seek to normalize a waste monitoring IoT system in buildings in the same manner. In the same manner. And you can see here with this arrow that that's where our project fits in. While our emphasis so far in this presentation has been on AI, as we continue on our goal, we will focus on scaling and embedded systems. 
And before I wrap up, I would like to thank the SRC for providing the opportunity to share my work and also to the JUMP URI program at UVA for facilitating this connection. And lastly, I want to thank my re research advisor, Professor Mother Bale, who has guided me and taught me throughout this whole process. Thank you.